again, everybody. I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. If you're a big Elvis fan like us, this is your society, our society, the EAP Society. Now, next we get into yet another attempt to try to change up what Elvis is doing. Yeah. Um, Elvis, in 1968, made the film Stay Away Joe. Stay Away Joe is described on IMDb as a mixed-race Indian rodeo champ returns to the reservation to help his people out. That's to the point. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, Now, this is directed by Peter Tewksbury, who is a very talented young director. Um, And it's uh, based on a 1953 satirical farce novel of the same name by Dan Cushman, which I have not read, but our friend in the TCB cast, Justin, has read. Okay. And he was telling me some interesting things about that. This is the movie that most changed in my estimation on this watch. Mm. Previously, I'd been kind of dismissive of the film. A lot of people that I know who are Elvis fans really hate this movie. Hmm. Like, they just think it's boring or whatever, what have you. I never felt that way. I completely disagree. Yeah. I think this is one of Elvis's stronger films as a film. Right. Um, For one thing, I think Joe Lightcloud is one of the best developed characters that Elvis got to play. Hmm. Because there's more than one facet to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh... He's obviously a smart guy who likes to sort of figure out how to overcome difficulties, but he's also sort of irresponsible and makes a lot of those difficulties. <laughs> right. He's yeah. not above a little larceny or lechery <laughs> if the, pre- the situation arises, but all in all, he's a pretty good guy. Right. You know? Right, right. And, yeah. um... Yeah, de- definitely the... the de- I don't want to say the most flawed of Elvis's characters, but... The most nuanced. Right. And you, you have... Or layered, I should say. You have some things that uh, people would probably find problematic because a lot of the uh, Native American family are played by white actors uh, with, you know, red makeup on. Yeah. But I really think there's something really moving about what the director is trying to do here. That's interesting. He's trying to show... Like, at first, I was kind of put off by all the fighting and the tearing stuff down and the way that, like, it never seemed like these guys could get anything built up because they would always either, like, sacrifice it for the moment. Right. Or, um, you know, tear it down in a fight like the house. Right. But that's kind of the point. Like, I think what Tewksbury is trying to get at with this is he's trying to articulate another set of priorities for how you live Mm. that this particular family doesn't prize possessions because they see them as impermanent right it's something that's going to go away right yeah they live as wild as the land kind of has it how it you know is it's talking about and going home and you see the guys fighting and there's these wide shots of the land it's shown as being part of this landscape and so these people, they, they like live to the fullest, yeah. regardless of the cost. Um, life is kind of, a, it's just a series of obstacles you got to overcome. And yeah. you know what? Hey, sometimes living to the fullest puts you in a new obstacle. Yeah. But guess what? You just figure a way out of that too, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Joe is the perfect guy for this kind of life. Yeah. That is very, it's very, a, a very freewheeling 60s look at life. Yeah. But articulated in what I think is kind of a moving way. Yeah. Like I was I was really surprised with how good I think Stay Away Joe is as a movie. That's fast that's that's really a fascinating way of looking at that because it's not yeah, because my 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 read was cuz I mean well a lot of fans have said, you know, like Elvis got an award for his uh, role in uh, Flaming Star. Right. And I was like, I wonder if those places were I went to Stay Away Joe and like, can we have that back? <laughs> you know? And, uh, but... Uh, but Elvis does a really good job in this movie. He does. He does. He, he absolutely does. And it's, I mean, I, I found it to be fun. Uh, but, um, again, like, when I look at characters, and this is one of the things I talked about, this is one of the things I was referring to when I talked about in part one that I don't tend to see 
when I look at characters, I look at characters on an individual level. I've never, even as a kid, I've never been, oh, this is what everybody, you know, this is what everybody who looks like that is like. And I never said that in my life. Right. I've never been like that. I've never looked at characters. I looked at, I've always looked at people as, as I, I've always looked at characters as individuals, just like I look at people as individuals. So, right. Uh, so I didn't see some of those things. And also, you know, I'm a kid from the middle of Iowa. There's going to be things I don't. Um, but... Uh, uh, the uh, but kind of you know using that as a critique of uh, materialism yeah uh, is a fascinating perspective that I didn't think of until you said it until you had said it when you told me about this uh, a, 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 like a month or two ago right I'm like that's really cool I I didn't think of that before and that's that kind of puts a different spin on this film and that's neat it's like honestly I think it's a good movie um. Now, is it per- a perfect movie? No, it is no. not a perfect movie. But it, it like it is a, an attempt to make a serious film, and Elvis is like really committed, and he looks great in this movie. Yeah, like he's really in good shape. Yeah. Um, the supporting cast is fantastic. You got Burgess Meredith, who's a great actor. Oh yeah. You got Joan Blondell, great actor. Katie Girardo, mm-hmm. great actor. Like, it's a superb cast. And you've got a really interesting character that Elvis is playing. Mm-hmm. Also, there's like a little bit of Bugs Bunny to uh, to- Joe. Oh, totally. <laughs> I'm especially thinking of the scene where he sort of likes the the big guy's woman, you know, and so he gets that guy to start a fight and then crawls out from beneath the fight. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I love this Bugs movie. Bunny, that's a great way of putting that, too. Yeah. Um, some of the songs are pretty good. Like, you got All I Needed Was the Rain. Stay away, Joe. This was recorded at Studio B. Yeah. Even Dominic. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, I mean... It doesn't make Dominic a better song, but yeah. <laughs> all, but, you know, within the context of the movie, it's it's funny. It's funny and charming. No, I'm just kidding around. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. So, my comments are better than average, sharp direction. It gets a little lost at times, but Elvis gives a nice performance. Mm-hmm. My... Score on this was a 79, which I think is a little low. Yeah. I think I could definitely see that as being a B more than a C. Yeah. I still, I still like toward the end when, 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 his, when his sister hits him in the head with like a frying pan or whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. So it clears the head a little bit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I thought it was a pretty good little movie. Yeah. I would yeah, watch yeah. it again. Yeah. Um, our next one is also a pretty good little movie. This is Speedway. Oh, yeah. Which I believe is the last... No, it's not the last collaboration between Elvis and Norman Tower. There's one more. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it is described this way. Poor bookkeeping saddles stock car driver Steve Grayson with a huge bill for back taxes, which hampers his ability to continue racing competitively. <laughs> so... Um, you got Elvis in this. You got Bill Bixby. You got Nancy Sinatra. That's just a good cast. It's a recipe fun. for a lot of fun. It's fun. And the other thing is, is that uh, that nightclub, or that dance dance club slash nightclub. Yeah, that place needs to exist. Yeah, I freaking love that place. That would be great. Like, like that's one of the things we were talking about. Is like we wish that when uh, EPE was sort of redoing. Uh, when they were making the expansion for Graceland, yeah. that instead of having like Minnie Mae's Suites and Vernon's smoke, Smokehouse, that they had done restaurants that were th- made to look like the restaurants in Elvis movies, like yes. like the place in Speedway. And Speedway would be the perfect like karaoke bar. They could serve sports food. They could, uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah. There's a whole concept. It'd be so easy to do. Um, hey, they could have, uh, they, could have they could do something that's uh, served in a... Silver, uh, uh, a silver glittering uh, uh, racing helmet. Yeah, exactly. And I, I will say, like with Spin Out, Tower Rock's direction is a lot sharper here. Yeah, he puts a lot of thought and stuff. Even like uh, the scenes where they're uh, getting ready to eat and feeding the, or like the little kid, giving the little kid hot dogs. Yeah, like, there's a lot of thought put in the way you ha- how they show. That, it's really, right? it's really, really cute. It's uh, and it, yeah. I, I love this movie. I absolutely love this movie. Yeah. If you had to pick between this and Spin Out, which is your favorite of the two? Spin Out, but not by much. Yeah, I agree. That's that's actually exactly what I would yeah. say. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I, I like Speedway a lot. <laughs> it's got some good songs on the soundtrack yeah. again. Big time. Um, Renata Adler of the New York Times this time wrote that Speedway was just another Pre- Presley movie which makes no great use at all of one of the most talented, important, and durable performers of our time. <laughs> Music, youth, and customs, which were were much changed by Elvis Presley 12 years ago. From the 26 movies he, he has made since he sang Heartbreak Hotel, you would never guess it. <laughs> Harsh, but not an uncommon opinion among Elvis fans. Yeah, yeah, sadly. Um... But no, I think Speedway's perfectly a perfectly good movie. I agree with that. I, I the score wound up being a seventy four, which I think is arguably a little low. Yeah. But it's a solid like it's a solid vehicle, and that's what I say a solid late, later vehicle for Elvis, with a strong cast of supporting character actors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speedway. Lots of good songs in there too. I would give it a high C. Or a low B. Yeah. I think that's a fair grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're like, you know, let yourself go. Who are you? Who am I? Nothing like a song. Speedway. Your time isn't coming yet, baby. Just, it's good. Yeah. So, one of the things that I'm noticing is in this last part, I mean, we've still got several films to go. Yeah. But after Paradise Hawaiian Style... We're getting a little more consi- and double trouble, which I don't like at all, but you do. We're getting a lot more consistent films. Mm-hmm. This is much more solid than the period that we did in yeah, season yeah, yeah. two yeah. overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I, th- I think I, I think Paradise Wine Style is is the low point. Yeah, as, at least as far as Elvis's engagement. Right. In, in it, and I, 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 I think Elvis is a little more engaged in Double Trouble than he is in Paradise Wine Style. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Uh, I'll agree. You with know, that. like I think he's, I think he's enjoying the material, uh, but this is, you know, I really, I really enjoy this movie. This is, this is absolutely bananas. Yeah, but it's fun. So, our next film is 1968's "Live a Little, Love a Little." This is the last collaboration between Elvis and Norman mm-hmm. Tatarog. And I think they go out on a high note. They do. Um, Absolutely they do. This is a this is a pretty decent movie. Um, now, the reason that they had to stop collaborating after this is because I believe Taurog went blind shortly after this film oh, wrapped. Oh, wow. So he, wasn't, he obviously wasn't able to direct anymore. Sure. Um, IMDb oh. describes the storyline as photographer Greg Nolan meets Bernice and loses both his job and his apartment. Not Alice? This is, this is Bernice. Oh, what? That, that, God. Yeah, okay, I get it now. <laughs> You're throwing me off. No, because her name's, you know. It's Alice. Alice yeah. and Bernice and right, Betty right. and Dorothy or something like that. However, Bernice manages to get him a new apartment, but it is so expensive that he has to get two full-time jobs. Nolan has trouble finding time to do them both without his bosses finding out. Now... It's such a glorious... It almost reminds me of Superman, the way he's going up and down the stairs and changing clothes and everything. This is peak 60s Elvis. Totally. Um, like yeah, Peak late 60s Elvis. Yeah, exactly. And um, if you've seen the um, Edge of Reality dream sequence, yeah. out of context, and not in the context of the movie, you won't get that the blue suit that he's wearing is supposed to resemble pajamas. Yeah. Right? It's the dream world suit version of pajamas that he's wearing when exactly. he falls asleep. Yep. Um, my one criticism with this, like, I think Michelle Carey does fine. Mm-hmm. There is something a little off about the way this script kind of came out, right? Hmm. Um, Justin Gaussman, our friend from the TCB cast, yep. has explained that there are some parts of this that follow the book slavishly okay that don't make sense without other parts of the book that are sort of chopped out of the script oh, okay. right okay interesting and i i do think there's a little unevenness in the yeah. script because of that okay um i think michelle carey is likable certainly even if she's a little overbearing at times uh the rest so of the... I, w- I always thought that was the point it is yeah. it absolutely is yeah. see like i see her character as sort of an embodiment of fate right yeah. you can fight it but Right. It's going to get you in the end, right? <laughs> um, the supporting cast is pretty good. Yeah. It's very different for an Elvis movie. Mm-hmm. 
this is much more trying to put him in kind of like a Rock Hudson mold, right? This yeah. Sort of romantic comedy. Uh, but even more 60s than that. Maybe even something like what Michael Caine was doing in the uh, 60s. Yeah, you know what? Definitely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like a lot of the songs. I think the soundtrack is oh, very strong. The soundtrack is phenomenal. I mean, and, and so much of it, again, has that late 60s feel. But it's, it, and it's so lush. Yeah, and so good. I mean, the strings and everything on "Almost in Love" are phenomenal. Uh, I've always said for the longest time that I so badly want to see the song "Wonderful World." Yeah, uh, in a Superman film with him flying over the sky, I think it would be freaking awesome. Yeah, you know. Uh, but oh yeah, th- there's you know. I think this was the beginning of Elvis's um, collaboration with Billy Strange, right? Yes. So uh, yeah. they did a lot of good work together. I wish they could have worked together more, even. Agreed. Um, but yeah, I th- the score that I wound up giving this was like a seventy nine, which I think is about right. It's about right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost a B, not quite. And I, my comments are: it's a bit daffy, but di- a very different reimagining of the Elvis movie. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They're, yeah, it, yeah, I could maybe be. Yeah. I can I can maybe see it those like one or two well one or two notes higher than that but yeah that's good. It's a you know Elvis's last few films were definitely trying to change things up keep him interested and I think it mostly worked. I agree until he got tired of the whole thing and just said no. Mm, yep. You know. Yeah, I mean the whole thing is is pretty good is a pretty good way to go out on honestly. Yes. Now. Of his last films, this one is probably the most, the one that will be the most controversial, maybe. Yeah, I I would say this is the weakest, but for specific reasons. I agree that it's the weakest, and um, we will get into what those specific reasons are. Yeah. Uh, The summary is, uh, with his criminal days behind him, Jess Wade, a rugged horseman who used to ride with the dangerous outlaw Vince Hackett, and his cutthroats, tries to distance himself from the murderous gang and goes straight. However, no one betrays Hackett. As a result, Vince decides to frame Wade for the theft of the Victory Gun, a powerful cannon of gold and silver that fired the last shot against Emperor Maximilian and freed all of Mexico. Before long, Jess finds himself on the run from the Federales, bearing the hideous mark of a thief and hunted down like prey as Hackett threatens to wipe the small town of Rio Seco off the face of the earth. Now, everyone thinks that Jess is guilty. Can he clear his name and save the town? <laughs> All right, we're talking about Charo. Yeah, if there are any gamers out there, this is almost the plot of Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> it's not quite similar yeah it's, it's like got a lot of similarities the, if this had had the plot of red dead redemption it would be a better film yeah um yeah we have some strengths and some weaknesses with the production uh, there's not much money put into this film no the sets look very cheap um the supporting cast is among the weaker ones in Elvis's last few films. Yeah. The director, Charles Marquis Warren, is actually an interesting guy. He has made films before that are mostly westerns. He worked almost exclusively in the western genre. He is also the guy who directed like the first season of Gunsmoke hmm. and was sort of the showrunner for the early episodes. Actually, of that. I could see that from the way the look of this. And did the same thing for Rawhide, so the two most successful western TV shows. Okay this guy was behind i see so he definitely knows the western the western genre however he worked mostly in the american western idiom and this is very clearly trying to be like a spaghetti western like right. clint eastwood had made with the good the bad and the ugly yeah more violent usually more stylistic although not under the in the hands of war. right yeah, yeah yeah um all in all, I see this mostly as a missed opportunity. Oh, huge. I don't think it really works the way that it is. The script yeah. had to go through revisions because it was supposed to be a more serious adult film, but then it was watered down for family audiences. Mm-hmm. And in the process, you lose a lot of yeah. why people are doing what yeah. and 
what their motivations are. Yeah. Well, and part of it also was, uh, you know, the, 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 the story goes, uh, that I'd heard anyway, was that because of uh, the Vietnam War, uh, moviegoers in general were not really fans of a lot of violence. Such a bizarre it, take. Th- I I agree. It, it something doesn't it doesn't pass the smell test for me. Right. But that's what I'd heard, and uh, so they were trying to, and maybe that's because they were polling people that wanted to see an Elvis film, which seems more likely. Um, so anyway, so the things kept coming back. No. Uh, no, you can't do that. People don't. Uh, people don't want that. People don't want that. And they kept essentially neutering the film to the point uh, that um, Elvis told at least one. I've heard this from several of uh, the, the the Memphis Mafia guys, uh, not directly, but in like video interviews and, and also print. That uh, eventually there was this. Elvis just like, okay, let's just take the money and run. I, I'm because. Apparently, he was pretty excited about this picture at first. Right. Um, and because it was going to be a much more serious and much you know, like, a, you know, spaghetti western like you were talking about. Right. And um, that's why I say if it was more like if it was more like Red Dead Redemption, it would have been better. If it was more like the good and the bad and the ugly, it would have been better. Yes. Uh, but as it was, it wasn't. And so we got what we got and Elvis took the money and ran and de- delivers as delivers not a bad performance still I would say but you can tell that he's not fully there. I think he's lost interest in the film by the time yeah they were making it. Uh, Roger Greenspun of the New York Times wrote of Presley's performance he treats his part rather as a minor embarrassment, and he seems <laughs> determined not to push himself in a role that could have used a stronger personality to fill the lapses in the story and the wide open spaces of the dialogue. And Variety writes that Presley strolls through a tedious role that would have driven many a other actor up a wall. Even more at fault than Presley, who has occasionally responded in the past to the demands of a good director, is Charles Marquis Warren, who takes the credit, or blame, for the script, the direction, and even part of the production. Huh. So uh, this is notable for being like the one film where you never see Elvis singing in the movie. Yep. Uh, which is something you can't even say for Flaming <clears throat> Star, which is a far better Western. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, um, let's forget about the stars originally was going to be sung, but then they cut it. Yeah, the two songs, <coughs> was it two songs that were recorded for this? Charo and Let's Forget Charo About the Stars? Charo and Let's Forget About the Stars. Both very good. Oh, yeah, excellent. Uh, also produced by Billy Strange, yep. I believe. Yep. Um, great, great arranging. Yeah. Oh. Strings on them are very nice. They're masterful. They're masterful performances. Um, my comments on this one were, Stinker, script is awful, sets look cheap, Elvis looks good, that's it. <laughs> and my total score was 52. Which, it might deserve a little bit more than that. In retrospect, I did not not enjoy this film. Right. Watching it. Like, I actually yeah. enjoyed this significantly more than maybe even it happened at the World's Fair. Hmm. But it's not good. It could have been a lot better. I mean, it's not a great film. It could have been a lot better. Yeah. And I wish that Elvis had been given the kind of role he wanted. Mm-hmm. The kind of role that would have suited a Clint Eastwood and we could have seen what he could have done with that late in his career. That would have been phenomenal. But, I mean, Elvis with that beard, man. Yeah. It's an iconic look, you know? It is. It absolutely is. It's the only time we'd see it. Yeah. Speaking of iconic looks... Yeah. Our next film is The Trouble with Girls, which is once again directed by Peter Tewksbury, who did Stay Away Joe. Mm-hmm. Very talented young director, really invested in making a decent movie. Yeah. Uh, IMDb describes this as a traveling Chautauqua show, an educational and entertainment uh, troupe, pitch their tents in a small American town with an ensemble of speakers, lecturers, teachers, musicians, And actors, as manager Walter Hale, must deal with a myriad of problems, including small-town prejudice and politics, nepotism, union problems, and a murder. 
Um, so Tewksbury puts a lot of imagination into the direction. Yeah. And one of the things that I think is very bold about this and very different for Elvis movies is that this is putting Elvis in an ensemble. Yes. He's not necessarily the main guy. Mm -mm. And you have a great supporting cast, which includes Vincent Price. Yeah. Although Vincent Price and Elvis never actually share a scene, which is so frustrating. Uh, Yeah, they almost did. Almost did. They almost do. Yeah. Um, And also uh, the voice of uh, Velma. That's right. Yeah. And you've got John Carradine, who's a classic Hollywood character actor. Yeah. Um, Marlon Mason does fine as the leading lady. Yeah. Even though I think she's just a little bit peppy for Elvis. Uh, Their energies don't quite match, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean... Which works for the film. Yeah, it does. I think, yeah, I think it's to the film's credit. Um... Elvis looks phenomenal. He does. He and, absolutely does. And he's once again working with Billy Strange. Yeah. And that collaboration is so fruitful that you have Clean Up Your Own Backyard, which was written for a movie. Can you believe that? Yeah. It basically summarizes the plot of the film. It does. But it's a great song on its own right. It is. It's a phenomenal song. Phenomenal song. Sounds like it could have been recorded at the American Sessions. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. And Almost is another great song. Almost is great. Yes. Uh, The 69 version of Swing Down Sweet Chariot. Yep. Fabulous. Yep. Um, And, ah, man, like, there's there's just something about this. Like, this is trying to make Elvis a little more risque, I guess. Yeah. And and this in the next movie, I think. Are a little more socially conscious. Sure. Um, it's an interesting experiment. I almost wish that he'd done more movies in this vein mm-hmm. till they could have stumbled across the one. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. that really put it across the top. Uh huh. Um, let's see. My notes are bold choice to do an ensemble film with Elvis. It doesn't completely work, but the good bits are very good. They are. Elvis looks great, and the songs are very strong. And my score on this was 76. Yeah. Which is a little bit less than uh, Stay Away Joe, mm-hmm. maybe. But still very good. It's, yeah. And it's, it's, very, it's a very good movie. So. Yeah. And then we're going to come to Elvis's last feature Here film. Here we are. The very last one. And that is Change of Habit mm-hmm. from 1969. It is directed by a guy named William A. Graham is not someone that I am very familiar with, but he was mostly a television director and started transitioning to uh, to the movies in the late 60s, and I believe Change of Habit might have been his first theatrical film. Wow. Which was kind of a theme with a lot of Elvis directors. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and uh, let's see... Uh, IMDB describes this movie as, In an uncommon dramatic role, Elvis plays Dr. John Carpenter, an inner-city doctor working at a free clinic. Mary Tyler Moore plays a nurse and a nun sent by the Catholic Action Committee with two uh, two other nuns dressed as nurses to help the doctor. Um, How can they make a difference in this hostile world? So... This is like the most socially conscious of Elvis's movies. Yeah. It's clearly putting him in the context of the 60s, mm-hmm. the inner city streets. Um, once again, you've got Elvis in a neighborhood with lots of diverse backgrounds. Yeah. He's seen as someone who can kind of, you know, help bridge gaps in this uh, area. Um he looks fantastic in this film. He does. The supporting cast is extremely strong. Yes. We've got Mary Tyler Moore, Ed Asner, Barbara McNair, yeah. Jane Elliott, like there Regis Toomey, who's in uh, Frank Capra movies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you got Charlie Hodge as a patient. <laughs> but yeah, great cast, great songs. Rubbernecking. Rubbernecking is in this, yeah. Rubbernecking. Change a habit, have a happy, uh, let's be friends. I mean, 
it's it's so good. I actually I I I think this soundtrack is a little bit weaker than the last few films than the Trouble with Girls and Live a Little Love a Little, but I still do like it. Yeah, I mean it's, I yeah I don't know I have a hard time I I place it on I place it on equal but but that's because the double features album has all of these together. Yeah. So that I see them I I. I I separate them between the movies that they are, but I also kind of like they're they're one thing to me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Actually, the FTD came out. The, his last movies was basically that same thing too. I think like Elvis and the cast make this movie like better than it has any right to be. Right. <laughs> like it's an enjoyable little film. Is yeah. it a masterpiece? No. No. But it's a really nice change of pace for Elvis. I'm glad that he got to go out on a more serious role. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's neat to, you know, see, see Elvis, uh, in, in sort of a more worldwide setting, something mm-hmm. that's a little less artificial than a lot of his other movies. Agreed. And, uh, the cinematographer on this is Russell Meddy, who was the same guy who was the cinematographer on Touch of Evil for Orson Welles. So, wow. Good pedigree there. Yeah. A little bit. Um... This, uh, let's see, with the box office, uh, I don't think this did quite as well as some of the sillier films. Elvis was kind of, you know, he was basically out of the game at this point. But let's see. The New York Times reviewed the film on a double bill with House of Cards and noted that both were merely exemplary of professional technique and dialogue rather than memorable characterization and emotion. Variety wrote that its intriguing idea has a well enough constructed plot line to flesh out its premise for a fi- good family fair. Presley displays his customary easy presence. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, I, if you haven't seen the film, I'm not. I don't really want to spoil it, but yeah, it's about a nun falling in love with Elvis <laughs> and wondering whether or not she should leave the faith. Right. Yeah. For the faith of Elvis. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm sure that made a few churches quite upset at the time. Probably did. <laughs> My comments were, this is a good final effort from Elvis, and I gave it a score of 81, which puts it on par with Clam Bake and Love Me Tinder. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's about right. I think that's about right. Yeah. The uh, I enjoy the film. Um, it's... Uh, I definitely, uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's fascinating. It's got a lot to say. Um, doesn't always, you know, I mean, uh, it's, it is of the time, so it doesn't always necessarily say it in the best way that it could. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, but honestly, um, you know, and then some, it's fun. there are some, uh, practices like, uh, the way that he deals with the autistic child in the clinic yeah. that are very dated and don't reflect modern medical mm-hmm. understanding, yeah. but were used at the time. Right. So yeah. keep in mind this is of its time. It's a period. Yeah, it's definitely. It's a. It's not intentionally a period piece, but it's become one. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, just because of what we know more. And, and that kind of goes to show how things have changed from then. Right. There's so many things that were done back then that they'd never do now. Right. And, and, and so that, that also should be a lesson for when you're looking at everything like having to do with Elvis and medical things. Uh, as you look forward, there's a lot more things that we know now that, uh, you know, I could also use like the, the use, the, the very widespread use of thalidomide uh, for uh, pregnant women and all kinds of things. It is a, there was, you know, birth defects and all kinds of crazy things were happening that it took years for the science to come back. Right. Yeah. Now, what what I think is interesting now that we've completed this journey through Elvis's films chronologically, yeah, is that the first stretch are mostly very solid films mm-hmm. up to like around 1962. Yeah. Now the second stretch, which also has a 1962 film and goes to 66, is very up and down. Yep. And you have some low, so you have some lows that are lower than anything in this last stretch. Yeah. But you have some highs that are higher than anything in this last stretch. Like yeah, Viva Las I mean, Vegas and Girl Happy. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. And then in the last stretch, you have much more consistent films. And they're good, but you maybe don't have the breakout like essentials like you would mm-hmm. in the, from the middle period. So. Yeah, I, I would say, though, that, um, you know, as the films get f- go forward, you know, there's 
there's something to be said for trading the spectacle for perhaps having something to say or uh, perhaps being uh, finding a different means of expression. Right. That uh, is very, it's experimental, but I think in some instances does serve does serve the narratives well in in a different way that may not be to all tastes especially as we understand as we as we as most fans generally come to see all here's the way i see it like in the first stretch for the most part you're catering to things elvis wants to do yeah and you're trying the formula and the early returns are yeah. good and establishing and this in establishing the early formulas right exactly in the second stretch it's all formula and you see that if if you have the willing cooperation of the star and the right elements in place it can be great yeah if you don't have all that stuff it can be a disaster yeah right yeah and in the last stretch you have more trying to find what elvis wants to do and letting him yeah letting him do what he wants you know mm -hmm. yeah. so how do you come back from disillusionment? How do you come back from um, artistic starvation? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, what, I think by this point in Elvis's career, like, you know, he'd wanted to be a great actor, but he'd been through so many disappointments. Yeah. He was just ready to get out of the game. Mm -hmm. He was ready to go back to recording. Yeah, yeah, had been, had been ready. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, so that's... Uh, that's our look at uh, it's sort of an overview of Elvis's movies and uh, pretty cool. All in all, I think Elvis's cinematic record is stronger than his fans yeah. give it credit for. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. yep. I mean, yeah, there are there are disappointments, there are bad movies, but overwhelmingly, they're at least fun. Yeah, they're at least pleasant to watch. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so you know, if there are some that you haven't given a look at. Um, Give them another, give them another try. Give them another look, and maybe if you really disagree, if you really agree or disagree, let us know in the comments yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is not a monologue; it's a conversation. So uh, go ahead and uh, drop some comments down there and let us know. And uh, you know, there's uh, I don't want to I don't want to say there are no wrong opinions, but there aren't many. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, I hope you all have enjoyed this uh, little look, this th three part look at Elvis's movies and uh, just uh, it's fun makes me want to watch them all over again so anyway I'm Jamie and I'm John and this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society until next time be good to yourselves be good to each other and always TCB my society my society here are those friends I want to see don't need no high society Society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society.